talked to each other early on in the pandemic when you cancelled uh, two sets of exams which directly affected my family, the A-levels and uh, GCSEs. Um, then we went into a system where students didn't know exactly how uh, they were going to be assessed. Uh, many of them had no laptops so that they couldn't get access to online learning. Then you brought in a totally catastrophic algorithm to decide what grades they might get. So many were downgraded. They lost out on future life chances at the universities they wanted to go to. Um, in, back in December, you told schools that they needed to stay open, even threatening legal action against them. Uh, then come the new term, you decided that schools needed to be closed. Still, half a minute, million children are without laptops to access online learning and they have no idea, again this year, how their exams are going to be assessed. How do you feel you're doing in your job? So, if I can just address some of the sort of points that you sort of made. Uh, you know, you raised a really important point about uh, children who maybe don't have access to internet. Um, you know, don't have a laptop or don't have a tablet. You know, that's why we took the decision. You know, schools have uh, estimated 2.9 million laptops and tablets. We decided that we needed to make the investment to put an extra 1.3 million laptops and uh, tablets, extra laptops and tablets into schools. But we do equally recognise there will be some youngsters that still don't have that access. So, what, and that's so more why than a million we... students uh, needed laptops. And how many have you provided? 800,000? Uh, uh, so we've delivered 800,000. But right. what I was also going to add um, is that any youngster that doesn't have access to remote education. Uh, last year, we changed the guidance so that if they don't have access, they're able to come into school and able to be, a, uh, be able to receive the support directly. I think that was the right thing to do because no. we don't okay. want to see youngsters can we just falling establish, between the gaps. Can we just establish, you closed the schools back in March last year. Almost yes. a year on, we still have half a million children who do not have laptops and therefore do not have access to online learning. How well, have you well, actually, managed to fail that many children? Well, the evidence goes to sort of show that actually there's extensive uh, laptop provision and tablet provision no, uh, out there. It might be extensive, both... Mr Williamson. It's not sufficient. So, so that's, that is why, is where youngsters, for whatever reason, it might not actually be because they don't have access to a laptop, it may be because they don't have, you know, because if they live in a rural area, they don't actually have the internet connectivity. But this is why we made sure that those youngsters that don't have access are able to go into the school to be able to uh, be able to use the resources okay. in the so school time, as well. So at a but time when you're telling families stay at home, and I appreciate some schools obviously providing uh, support to critical workers, uh, children um, and vulnerable children. But you're telling people this is a deadly virus. There's a hideous new variant. But send your kids into school because we can't provide them with a laptop to get access to online well, learning. Well, well firstly, uh, we, um, you know, all the evidence, and if you look at the Sutton Trust teacher survey, uh, you know, what they were quite clearly showing is that actually the overwhelming majority, virtually all children were being covered by that. That was before we uh, issued a further close to quarter of a million laptops and tablets just over the last sort of Mr. two William, and a half so when weeks. So when, when are the schools going to reopen? Uh, so, um, so, but, and I, I'll come to that sort of point on the reopening of schools, but this is why we also had the safety net. So if children aren't able, to have that access. Actually, schools sorry, have always I'm been sorry. a safe just, environment. We're, we're but, obviously got a but time in terms print. of... Can you just tell me when, when, when you think schools will reopen? Well, it won't surprise you at all, Piers. I want to see schools open at the very earliest moment. No, we I, so I, when, when I would are, always the Education Secretary. When are they going to reopen? Uh, well, when the health and scientific advice uh, says that we're in a position to be able to reopen them, when the pressure on the you, NHS no idea, is lifted... Right? Uh, when the pressure on the NHS well, I know is that, lifted... But you've, that, be honest, you have no idea, do you? Uh, it's the decision that will be taken at the earliest possible moment. Schools were the last to close. Schools will be the first to return. Uh, but, but as we sit here, you have no idea, do you? Uh, 
now. Uh, we, we're in a position where when we have the best scientific uh, advice, when we have the best health advice, yeah. that, you know, this was a national decision. I understand all that. Uh, I'm just saying that, the, obviously, you assured us in, in, uh, late, you assured us in late December that the schools would definitely be reopening. Everyone got wildly excited and everyone went back to school for one day and then they had to shut, which was well, no, one of many, many U-turns that you've had to make in this pandemic. I mean, if you go over your charge sheet, your record as leading our education system, repeatedly shamed over school meals by a footballer, exam result fiasco, the school reopening catastrophe, where you basically sent millions of kids back to school for one day to all infect each other and then go back to their homes so they could infect their elderly relatives, which may now be why we have this horrifying daily death number. Uh, we had a poll at ITV. Uh, two weeks ago, we asked England's teachers whether you should resign. 92% of them said you should go. And it does beg the question, given this series of abject failures that you've provide, presided over in the last 10 months, why are you still Education Secretary? Why haven't you done the right thing and resigned and let somebody more competent take over and do a proper job? Because you have failed our kids. So, Piers... We're facing more disruption to our education system than we've ever seen, even during the Second World War. Uh, we are faced with a new variant of a virus that at the start of December wasn't known about, and even in mid-December... We knew about the new variant uh, on the 19th of December because well, we the Prime Minister earlier. told us it was 70% more transmissible. And yet you said a week later the schools were going to reopen, even though many experts were saying, don't be ridiculous, that is a crazy thing to do. You then insisted on reopening them for one day and said there was not going to be a U-turn and literally after one day you shut them down. It is hard to conjure up a more incompetent decision-making process than that. Well, the best, uh, the advice that we're receiving as to whether we could continue to have primary schools open, we'd already delayed the opening of secondary schools in light of the new variants. But then when the uh, country moved into a COVID alert level five and more of the data was coming through. Uh, but it was a national decision that was taken in the national interest to close schools. Obviously, something that we didn't want to see. Have you offered your resignation at any stage of this second... Can I ask you, just a straight question. The, have, you offered, have you offered your resignation to the Prime Minister at any stage of this pandemic, yes or no? Our focus, my focus, is making sure that children get the best remote know, education know, while they're not in school. Of course it is. You're the Education Secretary. I expect it to be. But have you offered your resignation? Our focus is making sure that children return to school. Have you offered your resignation? Moment. And, uh, Piers, the other thing that we're doing... Is there we're a problem also, on, the, on the line? Can you not hear me? Um, and, uh, you know... Uh, Mr Williamson, focus, you're, you seem to be totally ignoring me. I'm just asking you a straight question. Given the level Alpha, of failure no. in your reign as Education Secretary in this pandemic, given that 92% of teachers in England want you to go, given that uh, you're being described by the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats as the worst Education Secretary in British history, I simply ask you, have you looked in the mirror and thought, you know what, I've done a terrible job, I'm going to say to the Prime Minister, it's time for me to step aside and let somebody more competent take over. Have you had that conversation with yourself and have you then had it with the Prime Minister? Piers, my one focus is making sure we deliver we very best We know what your focus is. You're the Education and, Secretary. Uh, the problem is your focus has not proven to be very good, has it? Um, uh, that, you know, we're dealing with a global pandemic where we've had to make decisions at incredible pace, decisions that none of us would have wanted You've to have You've made a series of bad decisions, Education Secretary, decisions that have had huge ramifications for teachers, for students, for parents. You've been a catastrophe. Own it. Uh, so our focus is always about bringing children back into the classroom at the earliest possible moment when the advice is that we can do so. We're going to be giving uh, children, we're going to be giving teachers, schools and parents as much Why notice about the return. Why should any of them believe a word you say, that given be... the speed that we go into U-turns after everything that comes out of your mouth? I'll Seriously. Give, uh, Mr Williamson, I'll give you an example, and that is that uh, many parents expected their children to go back to school after February half-term. How close to that point do you think we can imagine we can do that. 
Well, we want to see it at the earliest possible moment, but that's going to have to be a decision that's looking closely at the health data, NHS capacity. And while we'll want to give people as much notice as that, and that will be sort of two weeks' notice in terms of actually whether schools are returning it's or not. not. Going to happen after we obviously do half -term, want to. Is it? Sorry, I just, obviously... you know, just as an informational exercise for parents and teachers who are trying to plan their lives, it's not going to happen it anywhere near February half term, is it? So, so what we'll be doing is we'll be guided by best scientific advice and you uh, you know, and the best Williams. medical advice. Be honest. And, you know, be, be, be honest. School... Just be honest. I'd rather you were just honest with this. You haven't got a clue when they're going to reopen. Last time you reopened, you did it for 24 hours. You don't have a clue, so, do you? Uh, we, we will be guided by the best scientific and health advice. We'll obviously make that decision as close to the point as possible, making sure teachers, okay. schools, staff, why, pupils... Why does the UK... ..all have two weeks' sort of notice... OK, why does... The, yeah, yeah, you said that. Why does, the UK, why does the UK currently have the worst death rate for coronavirus in the entire world? Well, what we've seen is one of, uh, you know, with a new variant that we saw emerge, this has had, you know, the trajectory that we were going on in terms of the direction that this country was travel travelling on has been sort of massively disrupted as a result of that new variant. So, you know, I didn't believe, as most people did, you know, in terms of a generally improving outlook and the fact that we're having, uh, you know, the extensive vaccine rollout, that we would be in the place Why that we are here Why did you cancel Christmas, in Mr Williamson? Um, Why did you allow really... millions of people to meet and mix on Christmas Day when you knew in the weeks and days before, that at least a week before Christmas, that there was a new highly transmissible variant? You allowed well, it, millions of people to meet up with each other. So, as you'll recall, uh, when there was the announcement of a new variant, the government took immediate action to move a large part of the country, uh, over 75% of England, into a new tier, which was Tier 4, because we recognised that actually action needed to be taken in order to be able and to deal with this new variant. And you left the rest of the country um, allowed to mix on Christmas uh, Day. And, and in those other areas, uh, the evidence and the data was showing that uh, the case rates in those areas... The truth is, Mr Williamson, that once again, so, the government locked us down too late and we're now reaping the whirlwind in deaths from that dithering and delay, exactly the same as we saw back in March. That's why we're seeing 1,800 deaths recorded in the last 24 hours yesterday, 1,600 the day before. It's three to four weeks after Christmas. That decision was a disaster, and we all know it. Oh, let's leave with one question, because you, you avoided this earlier. And by the way, I know that your focus is on education. I'd expect it to be, because you're Education Secretary. What would it take for you to resign? Um... My job is to deliver the very best for every child in this country. That's what I'm focused on. 